I'm going to try to illustrate this using this redundant structure. It's basically a two spring mass system and then you notice it's statically indeterminate. So what you'll do is remove one of the springs, kind of apply the external force. And then we take um, the redundant spring, apply equal and opposite force both on the structure and the spring. And then we kind of pull it, move it into place and then drop it in the place. And the internal forces kind of cancel each other out. And now that the structure is solved um, in the, you can actually calculate the force and the deflection. So we did this example in class. So the basic idea here is if we can match this force and this force, as well as the deflection or the deformation of this point, you can basically drop in the deformed spring in place and the second spring on the rest of the structure wouldn't know you've actually made any change. We'll do the same thing here. I'll just illustrate the principle for um, for the truss structure. Essentially remove the redundant link, kind of apply the external force. And then we'll kind of apply these two forces over here that kind of changes this distance. Take the redundant link, kind of apply the external, same magnitude of external force. And then we kind of lift it, drop it in place. Since we essentially made sure that the deflection and the total length remain the same, so this link would drop in place and the forces would basically cancel each other out. Once again, the structure deflects when you apply the force, this distance is going to change. Uh, and then we do the same thing over here. And then as long as we can keep doing this, uh, the rest of the structure wouldn't know. And we can basically solve for this particular structure in terms of the unknown force. So that's what we're going to do here. So, oops. so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to remove one of the redundant links. So what we're basically going to do is convert the structure into a determinate structure with an unknown force in the place of the redundant link as shown. If we can make sure that the force we need to apply on this link and the force that we are applying on this or between these two joints are equal in magnitude, and we are able to make sure that the deformation, the relative deformation between these two points and the deformation of the structure B is equal, then we can ensure that when we drop in place, the rest of the structure, for instance, joint 3, uh, the support wouldn't experience any change and our, what we have done is effectively solve for the redundant structure. So a little bit of mathematics. So here's what we're going to assume. Uh, we're going to assume P sub EI are the internal forces due to the external force alone. So we're going to ignore the one Newton force at this point. P sub one in I is the internal forces due to one Newton force along one force, ignoring the external force PE. So the total force, if we need to apply P times uh, one Newton between one and four is given by P sub EI plus P times P sub one in. So this is fairly straightforward because the truss is a linear structure. So if I double this force over here, all the internal forces will be doubled. Same way if I double instead of one Newton, I apply two Newtons, all of the internal forces due to this would be also become two times. So more generally, if it's P, all the internal forces will become P times. So that's the reason we get this. And we can calculate the real deflection or the deformation of all of these links where I denotes what the links such as one, two, two, three, and so on is going to be P sub EI plus P times one Newton times the whole thing times L divided by AE. So this will give you kind of the deformation, the total deformation of each of these links when you substitute I equal to say one, two, one, five, and so on and so forth. Next thing is we have to, um, we are gonna apply, excuse me, 